So much for arriving before sunset. Oh, I didn't realize we were this close. Any idea what that is they built the village around? The Fallen Ruin. I've heard some call it an airship. Though its flying days seem to be behind it. It's a shame, that. You truly think a dominance waiting for us in that village? My scout has never given me any reason to doubt him. Which is why I think we should hurry. Come on. So this is a fast travel point, and one of the things that links this game to the idea of being something of an open world game. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not open world in the sense of something like Skyrim, where you can just pick a direction and go that way. But it does allow you to return to a lot of previous areas for the sake of just wandering around or completing side quests. So, having these uh, fast travel points resolves the issue of having to jump through multiple loading screens and environments just to get anywhere. This is a nice little environment, I have to say, though. Even though, really, it is something of a hallway, because there is one entrance and there's one exit, it, it is pretty wide, and, you know, it, it does kind of resolve an issue that I thought about in earlier games, or even like more open world games like Fallout or Skyrim, where the world doesn't feel large enough to really support like existence in a way. Like, okay, so let's say, let's take Fallout 3. You have the different villages all over the place, and then you have something here or there that you might be able to consider like a source of food or something, but not really. So you have these people who more or less just exist in an environment that doesn't have the resources to sustain them. And frankly, the world feels too small in a lot of ways. Now, when you have a game like this, where the different environments are broken up by loading screens, it does kind of give you the sense that, like, okay, you're just simply not seeing the entire world. Um, Sid and Clive could have spent hours walking. You know, what we got here. Why? What is it they want? You're welcome to ask the next ones we meet. Let me know how it goes. So they're traveling for more time than you're actually playing the game, making the world feel larger. And something that I appreciated in Dragon Age Inquisition as well. Instead of a large open environment, they had a bunch of smaller open environments to make the world feel larger. As a whole, anyway. No sign of the Royalists. Or anyone else, for that matter. It's too bloody quiet. Even for this hour. What do we do now? First we look for my scout. You start here, I'll circle around the back. How do I let you know if I find him? Good question. Shout? Subtle. I don't even know what he looks like. The village can't be completely abandoned, can it? Sid seems to break a little bit of a trend with this kind of uh, character relationships. Usually you'd have something of like a mentor and a mentored relationship between characters like what, what we're looking at here, where the older character is the serious one and the younger character is the one that is just sort of like has to learn how to take things seriously. Now while Sid does take his situation seriously, he's the only one that shows any kind of sense right. of humor. I'm not one of them. My friend and I, we're with the Imperial Army and we've come to help. Do you know where your parents are? In... in the church. Then I'm going to find them and make sure they're safe. Can you stay hidden here until then? To the church then. This game, more than most other Final Fantasy games, seems to try to portray the effects on war on society. The only other one that I think maybe does the same kind of thing would be Final Fantasy XII, where the 
Damascus, was it called, was invaded in the beginning of the game, and a lot of the story revolves around that. This man's gonna die if we don't get into a healer. Enough of your barking, dog! About time. Stand back. Who the hell are you? Clive! Thought you weren't coming. You still alive, Gav? <laughs> Barely. Been doing what I can for the villagers, but... I thought you were joking. It's all right. He's with me. Is this everyone? No. There were others. A pair of royalists came for the bearers just before you arrived. Was a dominant among them? Maybe. It's not like he was holding a sign. <sighs> Give me one guess where he's going. Clive, after him. I do wonder why they would kidnap the bearers. Now, of course, bearers are useful as slaves, and you may want to gather slaves, but... I don't know. Where the hell did everybody else go? There weren't that many people locked up in that room there. Anyway, we gotta get this guy before he <laughs> alerts anybody of our presence here. Any word from the scouts? <laughs> Not yet, my lady, but we have the dominant's companion. It's only a matter of time before we seize our quarry. Very good. And what of the others? The bearers have been taken to Cair Norvent. Some may still be worth keeping should the dominant elude us. All is in hand, my lady. They will not be spoiled. I give you my word. <laughs> Gentlemen, a toast! Will you join me? <laughs> My thanks. To our Lady of the Wind. And the King! Ugh, <laughs> Imperials drink this piss? Well, it would go some way to explain their breath. <laughs> Lady Benedicta! Imperius! And instead of killing them, you lead the rats straight to us. Mercy! <laughs> Look what we have here, boys. An Imperial Bearer. Good. I was getting bored. Boo. What is that thing? I knew 
assess what the relationship is between the dominance and the bearers and the regular like normal human population. Because on one hand, we've seen instances where dominance are in fact like people in significant positions of power, where you have somebody like Joshua who is set up to be the king of whatever the hell kingdom that was called. You also had that guy who was Titan, that was a dominant of Titan, who clearly had a lot of political power. You have somebody like Benedicta here, who is somebody with a lot of sort of, uh, I don't know what kind of political power she has, but she definitely seems to have the ear of the king, or at least is somebody in a position of power herself. But on the other hand, then you had characters like Jill, who seemed more like a prisoner or a slave than anything else. So... I guess maybe it's going to depend on the culture. Some cultures treat the dominance with reverence and respect. Others treat them like outcasts or maybe just tools. Similar to the way that bearers tend to be treated in a lot of these societies. Even maybe even the more altruistic members of society or uh, kingdoms or whatever tend to treat them like they are property. So you look at the... I'm, I'm blanking on what his name was, but the kingdom that Joshua and Clive came from seem to have shown a greater degree of respect and, and kindness to the bearers themselves, but still kept them as slaves. So, like, it's kind of a situation where they're, they're not as bad as they could have been. They're not as bad as others have been, but, you know, they still keep slaves. But given this is sort of like a medieval setting, it kind of, you know, goes with the setting that there would be slavery of some sort anyway. So I guess it just fits with the setting. So my point is, though, that dominance seem to have different positions in society based on where they are in what society they exist in. You've got some fight in you, even for a branded... <laughs> Clive! <laughs> Look who's here to save the day. Is this how you recruit all of your charges? Don't recall you complaining, Benedicta. So, Sidolphus, remind me. Why was it that you betrayed your kingdom? I asked you a question, Lord Commander. Why? Because I'd had enough of you and your king's antics. And yet here you are, stealing my branded. What are you plotting? As if I'd tell you. Lady Benedicta, we have secured the dominant. Always oh, something is there. And she's gone. She say where she was going. No. Then we head back to Lost Wing. One of the villagers may have heard something. But we can't just. Which is why I sent Gav. The man has a nose for these things. Trust me. <laughs> 